Hi and welcome to my art talk. So today I would want to talk about nature and beauty. Last week, last time I was talking about beauty and the importance of beauty for all of us and that we also need time to look at beauty and this time we barely have any more today. And so here's my picture recently uh, of a botanical study more or less made of my plants growing in my garden. Um, this is the sort of thing I do when I really need to uh, calm down and it's, I find it incredibly soothing. I have to concentrate 100% on what I am seeing and translate it onto paper. However, I don't want to do that in a way that confines it and just represents it almost photographically because I believe that as an artist I have to add more to nature. I have to show that nature, that bit of nature that didn't become. I have to create it on it. A higher level otherwise I wouldn't be creating something new I would just be copying what is and Schiller divided nature into two different categories he said there is natura naturans that is the created nature that's what we see and the natura naturata no nope, the wrong way around sorry pay attention Sybil natura naturans is the creating nature nature which is always working to create new and more, always growing, always dying, always regenerating. And then there's natura naturata, which is the created nature, which is what we see. So we were talking about beauty and uh, I recently had this discussion with someone on their Instagram feed and she said, well, nature is perfect. And I said, no, nature is not perfect. Nature is beautiful, but not perfect. Nature harmonizes. And perfect is a term we use for machines. Machines can make perfect replicas of each other. It's perfect, clean and dead. But what we see in nature is constantly becoming. It's like ourselves. We're not perfect by any long means. And as you can hear here, I'm waffling, uh, I'm not perfect either. So, you know, we all have our flaws but we are constantly becoming because by looking at something we can if we really see it we can take it into ourselves and then we can reflect what we saw and through this reflection of what we saw we've become someone else we've added more to us now we have that what we've looked at or heard in us so that is nature and the beautiful and perfect so I have to be very wary these days. The problem is the more I know, the more realize what how often we use terms in a very sloppy manner without really thinking about what they meant. And to say something is perfect in a way for me now means something is dead. And that again is my problem with AI art. AI art can't be art, it's made by a machine. It can be perfect because it's dead. The art I make is in soul through me. I have added another level to what I have seen using my senses and then my hand to translate that onto a page of paper or a canvas. So this is very, very important. And uh, last time I also mentioned I see beauty in the platonic sense and Plato defined this originally. He said there are three steps to beauty. First step is eros, that is the desire is directed towards sensual beauty, perception of the beautiful form. Step two requires the beauty of the soul. By this he means an inwardly purified healthy person. For Goethe he said a healthy person is a centered person. Step three, Plato demands that the knowledge one has in the world of ideas must be characterized by beauty. Such knowledge is characterized by balance and harmony. These are the cornerstones of the doctrine of beauty. These are Plato's steps for the ascent of ideas into the world of ideas. Ideas that do not fulfill these criteria are harmful, bad ideas for people. Aristotle said yes, but we live not only in the world of ideas, we also live in the world of experience and therefore need to connect the two. And this they then struggle to do. 
Plato says beauty is the key to understanding the world, how I connect myself with the world. Logically, the loss of beauty leads to a rift between the self and the world. And this is what I feel we are losing right now. We are losing our sense of communication with the world. Martin Rabe, who's been my art mentor and professor, um, he's an art uh, philosopher, an artist, uh, he's published works on art. Um, his definition is spirit meets us in beauty. However, this spiritual never comes to the fore in beauty because it is it, by its very nature, it has neither a real nor an ideal being, but only a being, its reality for and in mankind. Thus, beauty is always dependent on the counter-performance of the subject who wants to comp comprehend spirit and beauty. It is bound to him or her. One must move towards it. So, to see the beautiful, or to understand beauty, or to create beauty, we have to become active. We can't simply sit on the sofa and watch yet another series of Bridgerton, which I have to admit I'm quite enjoying, but it's really not very good. Uh, <laughs> so yes, if we renounce this search for beauty, then the connection with the spirit is broken. So we need to connect ourselves to beautiful things, to understand beauty, to take time to enjoy beauty and to become active towards it. And that's the main thing. We need to become active because we need more beauty in the world today. We need more appreciation of beauty and understanding and beautiful image, which is why I feel so strongly that I want to create beautiful art, which of course is very challenging and I certainly don't always manage, but I give it my best shot so that you can also have a beautiful experience when you look at it. Thank you. Bye-bye.